Man, I'm gonna trim my bangs. <sighs> Quarantine hair, am I right? So I filmed this video yesterday when my hair was a bit cuter and uh, went to edit it and I was out of focus the whole time. So I hope that is not the case again today. Hi friends, I'm Felicia. Welcome back to my channel. Or welcome if you're new. Um, yeah, there's a lot of new faces around here. So thank you for subscribing and checking out my channel. I hope that you are not disappointed. So hi, today I'm going to be um, sharing with you my TBR for the month of May, um, which includes my reads for Maybe Midrash. Maybe Midrash is a month-long reading event that is uh, that was created by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse and is also co-hosted by myself and Steve from Steve Donahue. And yeah, the point of this readathon is to um, read um, one work of fiction and one non-fiction book um, that deal with uh, religion. Any religion doesn't have to be any um, specific Western or Eastern or whatever religion, just any religion that you decide on, to read um, something that deals with religion and faith in a in a different way than what we usually do. Um, so we're encouraging people to read uh, things um, outside of the traditionally published um, Christian fiction. Not that it's necessarily, not that that's bad, but that um, the, the point of this is to explore the themes and the questions that arise when someone that has, I would say, the freedom to ask these questions, um, just to explore those kinds of stories. At least in my experience with uh, traditionally published Christian fiction, they tend to be very formulaic and they tend to be not really concerned with maybe exploring um, people having doubts, people of faith having doubts, um, they tend to just be more surface level, which is fine, but I think, at least for myself, and I don't know if everyone, oh, the sun's coming out, um, if everyone can, uh, relate to this, but I know in my faith journey, I have, um, I have grown up as a Christian, I have been in a Christian, raised in a Christian home, Christian environment, always going to church, and I have like the the good girl story, like I I was never, I never, you know, strayed from that path. But as a young woman, I went through a period that was very, I was very seriously grappling with my faith and struggling to make it my own and wondering what even was the point and there were many reasons for this um and it was not an easy time um it was very hard for me and so i don't like to think about it a lot um 10 years down the road but um it was very serious and very real and so at the end of it i'm happy that i went through it because like it it was a blessing i knew that um I just had the sense the whole time that God was not going to let go of me. So I felt free to kind of grapple with these issues and with these questions that I was having and just trying to make it real for me. So that being said, um, since then, when I've read Christian fiction, I don't relate to the struggles that these people are having because they seem so surface level. And I think that we should be okay with reading a story where someone is maybe grappling with their faith on the verge of walking away I think that to me that feels that feels very real because that's where I've I've been in the past that wasn't quite what I was planning to say so now I'm not quite sure where I was <laughs> so I think <laughs> the point with exploring maybe Midrash is that that we want to read stories that are kind of along those themes of what is faith, what is religion, what does it mean to believe in a higher power and all these kinds of things. And I think when we come at it through literary fiction, there's more, there's more space to ask these questions. And I don't think that we need to be afraid of reading things like that. 
at least for myself. Um, I'm coming at this from a place of, I think, pretty good discernment. I'm pretty rooted in my beliefs and what I believe about God and what I believe about the Bible and about Jesus. And so I'm comfortable exploring these themes, even if I might not agree with them. Although I am still sticking to books in Christianity, so maybe I'm not stepping as far out of the my comfort zone as I could. Anyway, so I'm going to share with you the books that I plan on reading for uh, maybe Midrash. I do have... it's... you're supposed to read one fiction, one non-fiction. Of course I have more. So because I'm an overachiever and I couldn't pick. So <laughs> I'm going to share with you the books that I plan on reading. I also have a few... Uh, just a couple recommendations for non-fiction. When I was thinking about what to recommend I didn't have any fiction books that came to mind and Jason has some good recommendations on his recommendations video and yeah so I'll just share with you my couple non-fiction um yeah I'll do that first. The first one that I want to recommend and that I, I would really recommend that you read this book at some point um is Girl Meets God by Lauren Winner. This is her memoir of her um journey to Christianity. Um, she was raised, um, her dad was a Jew and her mom was a lapsed Baptist is what it says on the back. <laughs> and I, if I remember correctly, um, that wasn't really practiced in their home, like either one of those facets. But then as a young woman, she, um, she pursued, um, converting to Judaism. Like she, did all of the proper things that you need to actually become an Orthodox Jew. And then a few years after that, she um, started down this road to meeting Jesus and becoming a Christian. So it was, it's a beautifully told account of, of this faith journey. I just, I personally loved it. I read it twice. Um, but it's been many years. So I would definitely like to read this book again at some point. It's just, it's just a wonderful journey that she takes you on and I definitely was impacted by it when I read it. So I would really recommend this one um, at some point, even if you don't read it this month. And then the other book that I want to recommend, I've only read one time like 12 years ago, so I don't remember a lot about it. Um, but when I was looking at my shelf, it stood out to me that I wanted to recommend it to you. And it's Stumbling Toward Faith by Renee Altson. This is also another faith memoir of her journey to um, meeting Jesus and God as father. The author comes from a um, abusive past and I believe it was in the name of God that she was being abused, which is just horrible to read about, to know that this is happening in the world is just awful. So in this memoir, she's coming from that past and then walking through this journey of, is believing in God and being a Christian, is it even worthwhile? Is there any good that can come from this with the past that she's had and the experiences that she had? Um, the writing is beautiful. She is also a poet, so there's um, some of her poems in here, and it's it's a it's a little short one, so it won't take you very long to read it. But um, I found it very impactful when I read it, and I would definitely like to reread this at some point, not this month. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this one as well for nonfiction. So now I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I'll just tell you my nonfiction picks since I'm talking about this is the nonfiction book that I plan on reading and that is still by Lauren Winner. So, so this is her memoir of, um, the sub subtitle is Notes on a Mid-Faith Crisis. In this memoir she is recounting um, a time in her life when I believe her mother passes away and then um, her marriage is collapsing and so she is, mm -hmm. hello, she is confronted with a lot of doubt in this time in her life. This is actually one of the books that Jason recommended in his video and I was like I already picked that so 
I've had this book on my shelf for a few years. I also have uh, one other book by her that I haven't read her latest one I think. So I'm looking forward to reading this book and seeing how she went from you know telling this story of her conversion to Christianity and then this where she is struggling with it I guess. So this is my non-fiction pick. I have uh, one other non-fiction pick that I I want to just start. I don't well I don't know. I'll show you. It's Bonhoeffer by Eric Metaxas and so this is um, a biography about Dietrich Bonhoeffer who was a a pastor um, and a theologian and also he was a spy during World War II and he was working against the Nazi regime. So I find him to be a very fascinating person. I borrowed this book from my father-in-law uh, years ago, like probably three years ago, which is deeply embarrassing that this book has sat on my shelf that long. Um, so I would really like to <laughs> attempt this this month as well. Um, I really want to just read it and give it back to him because I feel bad that it's been on my shelf this long. It's 600 pages, so it's a bit of a break. Tome Topple is happening this month, so I may try to read this for my Tome Topple book. We'll see. We'll see. And then moving on to my fiction picks, the first uh, one that I plan to read is The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. And this is actually a sci-fi novel, which I hear very good things about. Yeah, everyone that I know that has read it has really enjoyed it. So it's basically set in the future where um, there's a planet with newly discovered life on it. And so a team of Jesuit missionaries are going to this new planet to uh, evangelize to them. That's really all I know about it. And I'm really looking forward to reading it because I hear such good things about it. The other book that I'm reading, I have two fictions. The other one that I'm reading is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. And I'm going to be bunny reading this with Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. And um, we're going to be picking that up later in the month, I think, like maybe at the halfway point. And so this is all I know about this one is that it's, I believe it's a uh, told from the point of view of a minister telling his life story to his son in a letter or something, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but I hear very good things about that one as well, so I'm looking forward to reading that. I have one more. You guys, this is ridiculous. I don't know if I'm going to read this one or not, but it's an option. And that is The Complete Stories by Flannery O'Connor. And I actually won this in a giveaway from Jason last year. So thank you, Jason for the book. Um, and Flannery O'Connor was a Catholic and I think this is just the complete stories, her stories. I honestly don't know anything about what these stories are about. I haven't read anything by her but I hear good things so I would maybe like to read this. I'm just looking at this now. There's lots of stories so maybe I could read like a story a day and get through it. Maybe. Maybe that's ridiculous. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out at the end of the month how I did. Okay, so those are my maybe midrash picks, recommendations. This video is very long already. Storm? Yes, hi. You want to come here? No? Okay. Yeah? What are you whining about? What's up? How's it going? Yeah. How's it going? What is that noise? You have a gooper on your face. Okay. <laughs> Aww. You gonna sit on my lap? Don't drink my tea though. Okay. I'll quickly tell you the rest of the books that I'm planning on reading through the month of May. This is very ridiculous, just so you know. So firstly, I'm taking part in the um, Anne Along, hosted by Tiana of the Books and Amanda from The Curly Reader. So we are on Anne's House of Dreams this month, which is book five. And I'm looking forward to reading it because this has been many years since I've read this one. Um, I've read the first four books a few times and now we're moving on to the rest of the series, which I've only read once. 
So I'm looking forward to exploring this. One of my goals this year has been to read, um, to listen through the Ultimate Sherlock Holmes collection, narrated by Stephen Fry on Audible. So I'm listening to one book a month, and I also happen to only physical book for this month's read, which is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is book three. And yeah, I'm enjoying listening to them so far. Um, before this year, I had never read a Sherlock Holmes story. This is so stupid. I have three books from the library that I would like to read this month. They're only due June 30th and starting on May 4th libraries in Manitoba may open again at like a reduced capacity. Um, I don't know if my town's library will be opening up or not but I have three books that I would like to read and they're all completing series. So the first one of those library books is Orange Volume 2 which is um, the final volume in the duet. Um, <laughs> the author is um, Ichigo Takano and this is a story of a teenage girl. She gets a letter from herself 10 years in the future and she's basically telling her of things in her life that she regrets and she's telling her younger self how she can correct those regrets. So um, I really enjoyed the first volume so I'm looking forward to reading this one and hopefully it will be a satisfying conclusion. The next one that I want to read, there's tape on it, hang on, bear with. What? Do I sit in my lap? No? Oh yeah! Hi! Hey! The next one that I want to read is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black which is the final book in the Folk of Air series. Um, this is a fantasy series of a girl who is raised in the Fey Kingdom. So um, I really enjoyed the first two books so I'm looking forward to finishing this and it's just over 300 pages so it's not even that long which is nice because I have this one The Toll by Neil Schusterman which is let's see over 600 pages so cool. This could also be for Tom Tavo. Um This is the final book in the Ark of a Scythe series and I'm not even going to tell you what it's about because I've been talking about it long enough and uh, it's very popular. Two more books. <laughs> Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. <laughs> I feel so ridiculous with all of these enormous books. I There's no way I'm going to read all of them. I'm reading this with my In Real Life book club and uh, we were going to be meeting in May not happening now and um, we were going to read a half of the book for May and then finish the book for July but now we're just gonna finish it in July which is good because this is where I am and this is where I was supposed to be today so now this is what I will read in May and this is what I will read in June so really enjoying it so far um, I really like Alexander Dumas writing this is the last book this is a book that I've been telling myself that I want to read in May. Don't know if I will. Um, <laughs> but it's Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is the last book of Jane Austen's that I have to read um, as far as novels go. I know there's like the juvenile and stuff but so this is the last novel that I have to read and I'm very curious to see what I think about it because some people is their favorite and some people just hate it. Most people don't like it but um, Olive from a book Olive has rated this as her favorite Austen novel so I'm very curious where I will land on the spectrum because I love Northanger Abbey most people don't really like Northanger Abbey I love it it's my second favorite so we'll see where I end with this and so the <laughs> this is ridiculous this is ridiculous oh I did this wrong are you ready I'm not <laughs> this is so stupid these are all of the books that I plan to read this month. It's not gonna happen. Plus the two audiobooks that I don't have physical copies of. So that's very silly. So that's what I plan on reading in May. And then also I uh, I had pre-ordered the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. 
I'm not even going to attempt to read that until June. Um, that was what I had planned to uh, read for my birthday. My birthday is May 28th. Feel free to send me a book if you want. I'm just kidding. But I would like books. <laughs> oh dear. I, yeah, so my birthday is May 28th. And I'm really hoping by then that, um, I'll at least be able to go out for dinner and get, uh, some milk bubble tea. Because that's kind of what I like to do on my birthday. I like to go to my favorite Mexican restaurant with my husband and then go get milk tea from the place down the street that makes the best milk tea that I've had. And then we like to go to chapters and uh, I buy a book for my birthday. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, bookstores could open in Manitoba. So chapters might open, not sure. Who knows what will happen by the end of May? That's four weeks away already. In four weeks, many things can change as we have found out this year. So let me know how you're doing. How are you doing? Are you doing well? I am doing mostly okay. I've had some hard days, um, but for the most part I am okay. I am a homebody. I'm an introvert. So being at home all the time is not a hardship for me. And working from home has been delightful. I think on Monday we're going to start kind of integrating back into the office. So I will be going in three days a week in the morning starting at 8 until when I run down my work, which will probably be like noon. So that's fine. I really enjoyed not answering the phones. My job is, the main part of my job is being a receptionist and I don't like answering the phone, but that's fine. It's fine. I have a really great workplace. I really like where I work. Um, I don't love my job that I actually do, but I like where I work. So I've been there for six years already. So <laughs> it's okay and um yeah so things are going well like I miss I miss my family a lot and I miss my friends and I miss church Easter was so it felt so dumb it felt so dumb um I am really involved in the worship ministry in my church and so I like to make Easter special and so to be at home on Easter felt very weird and that was a hard day for me I felt very wrong the whole day. So I ended up baking cookies and delivering them to um, our family and uh, my best friend. So we like dropped off cookies at the door and um, so it made me feel better. I just hope that soon, well, I don't want things to go back to normal normal. There are some things that we can do without, but um, at least as far as, you know, connecting with people and, you know, not being so cautious of strangers and being afraid to touch people and be too close to people that I'm not enjoying. I, I'm an introvert, but I really care about people. So, um, I don't like that, that kind of fear and I can't wait for that to go away. I think I'm done talking to you now. This is a very ridiculously long video. At this point I've been talking for half an hour which is far too long. So um, I hope that you have a really good day. Let me know how you're doing. If you want to buddy, buddy read any of these books that I've talked about, let me know. Yeah, let me know if you're taking part in maybe Midrash. Let me know what you're up to, how you've been. Yeah, that's all that I have. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks again to all the new people if you stuck around this long. Congratulations. So I hope you have a really good day and until next time, so long and thanks for all the fish.